Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, many of you have asked me to do an updated car collection video. It's been about three years since my last one, and many of you have asked me in the comments, what do I still have, what's still there, what have I sold, all that sort of stuff. So I thought today I'd give you a quick tour of my current collection. I've just realised I've stood in a patch of oil. Land River problems. Where should we start then? We'll start with the Jag. You'll have probably seen this on a couple of videos. It's a 2010 Jaguar XKR, so it used the exact same 5 litre supercharged V8 as my white Range Rover and I love this thing. It's a top spec portfolio, so it comes with heated seats, cooled seats, heated steering wheel. It's got everything on it that you could possibly wish for. I love the noise it makes. I just love the way it drives. It's done about 65,000 miles, but the service history is superb. There are a couple of negatives though, and to be honest, I wouldn't mind selling this and replacing it with a, a facelift model, like a 2014 with 20,000 miles on the clock. But I just know I'm gonna to have to add another 10,000 pounds to it, and for now, that's perfectly good enough. It's just me being stupid. But the facelift has slightly different headlamps with LED lights here. It just looks a bit more fresh. I also am not a fan of this chrome. So this has got chrome here where it says supercharged and down here. I just think it looks a bit, a bit chintzy. I do genuinely love the XKR though. I think they're great cars and great value for money. But you do have to live with a few, a few minor negatives. So basically it's just the fit and finish. Things like the door handles, both the interior and the exterior, just feel a bit cheap. Have a look at this around here. So things like this, for example, I mean, it's got a decent sized boot, but something rattled then. Look at this. That's the handle that you, you know, pull on to close the boot. It's not a Porsche, is it? Oh, there was, my, there was one minor issue with this. That's my gear selector that pops up and then you twist it. There was a fault with the electronic handbrake, so I've replaced it with a, uh, with a new one of those. You can't just buy the handbrake, you've got to buy the whole assembly, which is £750. Anyway, it's an awesome car, that. In terms of running costs, though, it is quite high. The road tax is £695 a year. I do it as a direct debit every month, but it's about £59. It is quite expensive. Also, you might laugh at this, but I was expecting it to be slightly better on fuel. I know it's a 5 litre supercharged V8, but it isn't a big car, and yet it's worse on fuel than my big hefty Range Rover. I just expected to average 22 from that, and in reality I average about 17. It isn't great. Still, I do find myself driving this one more than most of the others. It's just... sounds a bit silly this, but it's really me, this car. Who wants to hear a cold start? I know you do, don't pretend. I just love how usable this car is. Everything's really luxurious and just really easy and pleasant to live with. You get a proper six-speed automatic gearbox, not those horrible twin clutch or semi-autos. The steering's nice, you get heated seats, heated steering wheel, electric seats. It's just got everything on it that I could possibly want. And also one thing that has kind of changed my, changed my life with it, it doesn't have Bluetooth. It has Bluetooth for the phone hands-free, but not the media streaming, so I can't play my music, but, I bought this off Amazon for £85 and it's just a Bluetooth receiver thing that plugs into the USB thing down there and then all of a sudden I can stream my music and that has genuinely changed my experience with this car. It means I can play all my rubbish tunes. Excuse my KFC wrapper there by the way, I was trying to fix a hangover and it worked. Two little uh, flaming wraps from KFC and my hangover was gone. Right, let's move to the next one then. I also love the fact that this is a 14 year old car now and it's got things like keyless entry and exit. Next up then is my 2006 Range Rover Vogue, the 4.4 litre Jaguar V8. It's a 300 horsepower motor and it is finished in, arguably, you could argue but you'd lose, arguably the best colour, Givenchy Green, with a matching green interior. I've spent a fortune on this car. I bought it from, it turned out to be a friend of a friend actually, but it was a, a viewer of the channel emailed me to say that this was his auntie's car, she no longer needed it, and would I be interested in buying it? So I did, bought it, then spent probably the same again on it. I paid three grand for it, and I've probably spent two and a half maybe. But I love it, 
I really like it. And genuinely, I think that's been quite a good investment because I think it's probably worth seven, eight, maybe. And touch wood, it's been completely reliable. I don't know if you watched the Christmas Day special that we did, but I took this all the way up to the Highlands in Scotland, all the way up to Glencoe. And it was a really effortless drive. It's not the best on fuel. This actually is a bit like the Jag. It's in the highest tax bracket of 695 a year, which I've got to say quickly and move on, otherwise it depresses me. 695 a year to tax. And in terms of miles per gallon, what am I averaging? 15, 16, it isn't, it isn't brilliant. On a run up to Scotland, I think I got 22. I think. I can't remember. It was several trips to the fuel station anyway. When I say it's been faultless, that's not the whole truth actually. There are a couple of little faults. So the first one is the central locking. It's just stopped working. I've replaced the key battery and it isn't that. So now I either leave it unlocked, don't tell anyone, or I'll have to lock it with the key, which is fine. But when you come to unlock it with the key and open the door, you get this, sounds like a rape alarm. You ready for this? And you've got to quickly put the key in the ignition and make it stop. Still, it's an 18 year old car, isn't it? So what do you expect? There is another fault actually, while we're talking about faults, that is the radio. Sometimes it just goes off and then three seconds later it comes back on again. I think it's some sort of issue with the amp in the boot. So I need to get that resolved. But apart from that, it's perfect. And I really genuinely love using it. It's really pleasant to use and drive and it's really smooth and all those things. But above all else, I just think it looks really cool. Next up then is a car that you're probably all familiar with. It's my 2000, what year is it? It's a late 2018 68 Reg Range Rover autobiography. Now I bought this two years ago. I've had this a whole two years. I've done 20,000 miles in it. It had done 14,000 miles when I bought it. It's now done 34. I wouldn't normally talk figures now, but I think this is a bit self-deprecating, so I think I can get away with it. I paid, I'll say this quickly, £79,000 for this car, financed it, and today it's worth 55. So what you're looking at here, ladies and gents, is a whole bunch of negative equity. There's a whole load of negative press at the moment about Range Rovers being stolen. And I just think it's typical Land Rover, really. It's people, people that have never owned them or people that don't like them love to jump on the bandwagon and make a, a mountain out of a molehill. Yes, they get stolen, but so do most cars. I'm not, I mean, I am defending them. I will defend them until I take my last breath. But I don't think they're any different from anything else. Actually this, I got a letter from Land Rover the other day to say that there's some theft recall thing. So I ran it over to Land Rover Nutsford, had a cappuccino for 50 minutes. Somebody tried to sell me a new one, which I wasn't interested in, and they did this theft recall. So now I don't think I've got any worries. The price of Range Rovers have collapsed thanks to all this negativity, and I'm not sure they'll ever recover, to be honest. But I mean, they're still a really desirable car. I honestly, I can't think of anything else that I'd rather have as my, I can't say daily because that's an American thing and I, it makes me uncomfortable, but a car that I use frequently, both to commute in and drive to the shops, and sometimes socially. If only there was a word for that. Okay, then let's talk running costs. We've already talked about the whopping depreciation and the fact that I owe more than it's worth, but we'll gloss over that. You've got to consider the road tax. Now, because this is a 2018, for the first five years, it's they sting you with some extra luxury sales tax, whatever it's called. That's an extra 550 a year. Another year's time, when it's six years old, that just drops to 140. So then we're all right. But the miles per gallon isn't great. I average about 22. Still, it's better than this and that, but it's not, it's not great. What's unbelievable about this car though is the performance. I'm not a quick driver particularly, but, don't laugh, but when you put your foot down in this, the whole thing just lifts up. Like, it's like a speedboat. It's so sort of theatrical. You almost feel like it just lifts up and it surges you forward towards the horizon. It's brutal really. You just don't expect it because it's got those pillowy soft seats that massage you as well. It's my dream car and Honestly now, uh, I might sound a bit materialistic here. I'm really not, I don't think I am. I just like having a nice car. I'm not interested in getting the latest model. I'll just keep this probably forever. It's still only done 34,000 miles. It's quite low mileage for its year. It's been completely reliable. Yes, I've got higher running costs, but I think that's a, a small price to pay, to be honest. Before we continue, I just want to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. 
If you're setting up a business, one of the first things you need to do is set up a website. And with Squarespace, that couldn't be easier, even if you're a technophobe like myself. From websites to online stores to marketing tools to analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build and run your business. We're currently building a new website for the online store. I just want to make it look more professional and, uh, I guess, cooler. And crucially, I want it to be easy to use both on a desktop and on your smartphone. Now have a look at this. Creating a website with Squarespace couldn't be easier. There are loads of different templates to choose from. Once you've chosen your template, you can edit and change what your website looks like just by dragging and dropping photos and your own logos and fonts and colours and that sort of thing. It really is as easy as that. Before you know it, you've got yourself a professional looking, personalised website like this. So if you need a website for your business, I think you really must these days. I know it can seem like a really daunting task, but thanks to Squarespace, it doesn't have to be. So when you need a website, don't forget to check out squarespace.com forward slash hypecortos for 10% off your first website or domain name. Right, thanks Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. On to the tour then. This is new for me, by the way. I've always wanted a double garage. And I'm not complaining, but I do wish it was maybe two foot wider. So in here then, it's something of a an AMG den. On the right hand side, we've got my 2016, 65 reg, Mercedes AMG GTS. Now I keep flirting with the idea of selling this because I really, I rarely use it. But every time I do use it, it makes me feel special. It makes me feel 25. It's too much car to be honest, it's brutal. I've nearly lost it several times and I'm not a quick driver. It's just, you've got to be on your guard with this thing all the time. But, and this sounds really shallow, it just turns heads. When I pull up for a coffee or something in this or a meal, you just feel like a bit of a rock star. I know that sounds cringy, but I can't think of another way of explaining it. It's difficult to get into. It isn't great on fuel. It's loud, it's brash, everything that I'm not really, but I like it. Now this actually has taken a little bit of a hit depreciation wise. I've had this for two years now. I'm not used to having cars for so long, but this and the Range Rover I've just had for a couple of years. I paid 64 or 64 and a half, I think for this, 64. And today it's probably worth, it's got a trade value of about 48 with a retail of about 60. So I haven't lost a fortune on it, but it wasn't great business. Now, luckily for me, I can retail my way out of these cars, so I'm not taking a trade hit. I'm not buying high and then selling low. I can kind of mitigate that, that loss. So if I have lost five or six grand on this, plus the cost of servicing and all that sort of stuff, I have had six grand's worth of enjoyment out of it. So when you look at it like that, it's money well spent, really. In terms of servicing and running costs, then I've had it serviced twice at SPR Mercedes in Stockport. The first one was quite a big bill because they were doing everything, you know, they needed to do to it just to bring it up to speed. The second one, was just a minor service. So it wasn't that expensive. My insurance spiked a little bit and I had to have a tracker fitted just because of what it is. Um, just trying to think what else I've spent on it. I think that's about it. The road tax isn't high. I think it's only 360 pounds a year. So it isn't silly like the Jag or the Range Rover. And nothing's gone wrong with it. Nothing at all. There was a recall actually for a, I think it was a rear diff or something that Mercedes did. Cause it was real. This is the one downside with this. This is why I kind of prefer the Jag XK. It's very loud, this car. You've got to be in the right mood. There are creaks and stuff from the dash and there's an awful lot of road noise, but it's a, it's a proper track focused thing, isn't it? So you can't expect it to be as comfortable as a Bentley Continental because it's not that kind of car. But before Mercedes did this recall, there was a whole load of road noise. It was unbearable actually. Anyway, since they've done that, it has quietened it down a little bit, but I've been all over the place in this. I've been to London several times in it. I've been to Paris. It's just a cool car and you rarely see them. Sometimes when I think about selling it, when I'm in a bit of a, a grumpy mood and I'm worrying about money, I drive past this garage and think, I've got a lot of money just sat there doing nothing. I could put that money to better use. And then also sometimes I think, well, you're only here once, aren't you? Why not? I was gonna give you a cold start and a bit of a tour, but I've done loads of videos with that. I'll leave the links below in the video description to all these cars because they all have their own dedicated videos. Now, because it's in this garage, I've got, I took note from uh, TG and also Harry's garage. I've got several mouse traps set up. I leave the windows cracked just to let let them air out, basically. But I've got a couple of mouse traps, humane ones, by the way, set up. I don't want them chewing into the wiring loom and all that sort of stuff. And I do try and start them at least once a month and just take them out and just keep them keep them mobile. Over here under the sheet, this this is my pride and joy, really. This is going nowhere. This car. I wanted one since the first time I saw one in 2002, but could never afford one. So when I was offered one, I thought, 
I can't refuse. Should I have a look what's under the sheet? I think you know. Actually, thinking about it, the main reason I couldn't afford one was because I was 12 years old. Anyway, right, let's do the whole reveal then, shall we? It's not quite wide enough, this garage. I'm not complaining, these are uh, not bad problems to have. But I can't, literally can't get that out. Anyway, you get the gist. It's my 2002, late 2002, 52 reg, Mercedes SL55 AMG. It's a 5.4 litre supercharged V8. It's one of the best engines ever built. It's a beautiful car. Now I bought this with 15,000 miles on the clock and I've had it for, in fact, this is the longest car I've ever had, ever. I bought it in 2020, just after COVID lockdown and it had done 15,000 miles. It's now done 18,500 or something. So I've done 3,000 miles in it. But it's one of those cars, I love using it. There are a couple of drawbacks. There's no Bluetooth and stuff, obviously, so I can't play my own music. So I'm just left with whatever CDs I find in parts exchanges. And I'm a little bit bored now of Dire Straits and Scouting for Girls. Also, the MPG isn't great, you might expect. It's an old dinosaur of a car, this. So yeah, I average about 15. It really isn't anything to brag about. Road tax is cheap though. I think it's only 325 pounds a year. It isn't too expensive. It's sailed through every single MOT. I've serviced it twice, just on time-wise, not mileage-wise, obviously, because I don't do the miles. And SPR Mercedes look after it for me. I think they always enjoy having it in because it's one of the, the lowest mileage SL55s they have on their... Uh, roster. Roster. It's currently here on a trickle charger using one of these C-Tech chargers. And I do, look at the state of it. I feel a bit guilty. I try and look after it as best I can, but I'm just too busy. I also don't like leaving that plugged in all the time, but I have had to put a new battery on it because for before I moved here six months ago or so, it was just in the showroom at work out of the weather and it wasn't on trickle charge. Occasionally people would move it out of the showroom to get something else in, that sort of stuff. And the battery did die and I got loads of warning lights on the dash. So SPR put a brand new battery on it for me, hooked up the C-Tech charger thing. So now it's just in here in hibernation until the summer. I do intend to take this on a road trip, but I go through different stages of thought with this. Sometimes I think, it's my car, you're only here once, I'm just going to use it because I enjoy it. Other times I think, it's done 18,000 miles and it's 21 years old. I need to try and keep the miles off it and protect it. That's my thought process. But then what's the point of having it if you're never going to use it? See what I mean? Spend a day in my life with my brain. Good luck. Right, I've got one more car here then before we have to venture elsewhere. By the way, my front garden here, I'm thinking of ripping up and then putting something down, maybe tarmac, concrete print perhaps, or resin. That way then I could put two more cars there. I haven't bought those two cars yet, but I think it's a good idea because I'm never going to sit out there, am I? What's the point? Anyway, job for this year. So the last car here then is this 2007 BMW X5. Now I do use this occasionally, but it's basically our film car. So it's a seven seater with a split tailgate, which is what I specifically needed so that my talented team can follow me around, or actually I follow them around while they get good shots out the back. So that's what we use that for. I bought this car from a YouTube viewer down south. We were on a, a trip with Kia down to Castlecombe and the next day I emailed this guy and we went down to, uh, to meet him and his wife. They'd had it for a number of years and I thought it'd be perfect for what I need it for. The plate there I just stuck on just to take the age off it. That plate was on my old SL, my old 1995 SL. So I just stuck that on. I paid 2000 pounds for that car. And I think it's the best two grand I've ever spent. So far, we've had it maybe four months, five months. Not had a single fault with it at all. It's just been perfect. I've had a service done. That's about it, I think. I think we replaced the wiper blades maybe. Well, that was it. Now, unfortunately, again, it's in the high tax band. It's 675 pounds a year or something. But as I always preach with car tax bands, that car cost me £2,000. I could have spent £6,000 and got one from 2009 in a lower tax band, but what's the point? It wouldn't have saved me any money, would it? So I think you've just got to get your head around the fact that you can't have it always, all the time. It was a cheap car. Unfortunately, the road tax isn't so cheap, but just get on with it. It's done 150,000 miles. Well, actually, now it's done 155,000 miles or something. We've done 5,000 faultless miles in it. It's been up to Scotland with us. It's been, it's been all over the place. It's a really good workhorse and it drives really well too. In terms of the miles per gallon, it's a three litre diesel. So you'd expect it to be quite good and it isn't really. I think it's just a, an old worn out car really. On a run, you'll get 27, 28 miles per gallon. So it isn't 
it isn't an enviable figure, to be honest. I need to get some boot struts for it because we're about two weeks away from that dropping on someone's head. So I do need to order those. In fact, I'll do them in a minute. But that's about it. It's due its MOT in a month. So I need to get that done. And apart from tires and stuff, I can't, I can't see anything else. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Right, well, that's everything I've got here on my driveway. I've always wanted a big driveway, but the trouble is the more space you have, the more you just fill it. This is a problem. I've got several other cars at work scattered around in various places. So we're gonna hop in one of these cars. And I'll take you to see those. Okay, so there are three more cars to talk about. One is currently up in the air, having a load of work done at SPR Mercedes in Stockport. That is my W163 Mercedes ML500 with a spare wheel carrier. It's only done 45,000 miles and I just felt like it was worth saving. I love that era of ML. This one being the five litre petrol V8, I thought, why not? I know you haven't seen that one yet, but there is a video coming very soon, so keep your eyes peeled. The next on the list, well, the next two actually, are both Range Rovers. Surprise, surprise. I like variety, but not too much. So you'll be familiar with this one. This is my 2002 Range Rover Vogue. Now this is an L322, quite an early one. It's Vogue spec, and it's a 4.4 litre V8 petrol. Now this one uses a BMW V8, which is so smooth. I love this engine. It's prone to having timing chain issues, but luckily this one seems to be all right. It sounds really good and it still feels quite pokey. I think it's 272 brake horsepower or 282. Anyway, nearly 300 brake horsepower, but I really like it. I know it's a 21 year old car now, but I think it's in pretty good condition. It's done 141,000 miles. It's due its MOT next month. So I didn't need to get that done. And I hate to say this, but I think it's, I think it's sitting a little bit low on the front end. I think it might need some air suspension work, but it drives absolutely mint. I upgraded the sat nav unit so it plays Bluetooth. That was done by a company called Carphonics, I think, in North London. It's got the nice pale leather interior, which is piped. There's one more issue that I need to fix with this car, and that is the air conditioning. It has quite a thoughtful air conditioning system in that whenever I gas it, it likes to share it with everybody else, but not me or the occupants of the car. So I do need to address that because I've got a couple of road trip ideas for this. And I don't want to give anything away, but I will need aircon. So I've ordered a new condenser. My mechanic's going to fit that next week while they do the MOT. I shall gas it again and keep my fingers crossed. After it's had its MOT, my plan with this is run it down to Jimmy the Magician, get him to do various bits of paintwork, the back bumper, the front bumper, the door handles, and I also want this trim here, which I bought from Powerful UK, I want this to be the same colour as the badges as it should be. Now, I've got absolutely no need for this car at all. I rarely use it, but I paid £1,200 for it, or 1250 or something, so it's cheap. The road tax is 300 and something a year, and, I mean, it does 12 miles per gallon, so... It's not all bad. My last one on this list, in fact, may as well take a seat, hadn't we? My last one on this, don't trust those struts. My last one on this list is my 1992 Range Rover Classic. That is a Vogue spec. It's a 3.9 litre petrol V8, which hasn't been LPG converted. None of these cars have. I don't like LPG. That is currently undergoing a, uh, an extensive restoration with the lads from Transformotion. There are already two videos on their channel featuring that Range Rover and it's in a state. You'll think I've completely lost the plot, but it means quite a bit to me, that car. I've had it for seven years and I've never done anything with it. I've just had it, I've just had it trailered from place to place under a tarpaulin sheet until various people shouted at me and then it got moved again. It's just gone from pillar to post, but now hopefully I'm gonna get it back on the road. It's finished in that Plymouth blue colour, like the one of Essex Boys, and the interior is that crushed teddy bear cloth. It's a really cool car. It's automatic, and what else can I tell you about it? It's got a sunroof. If you go back and watch those Transformotion videos on that Range Rover, bear in mind they've just started work now, so there might not be any more videos featuring that car for another few weeks. But I had all the welding done about five years ago, so it doesn't need an awful lot of welding. When I bought it, it was like a Flintstones car. There was just very little left of it. But now all that's done, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still quite a big job. It's gonna take them weeks. But it is a solid-ish foundation, really. And I just think when that's back on the road, it will be the coolest thing to use as a local runaround. I'll go and get my coffee in it on a Sunday morning, that sort of thing. Now that Range Rover Classic in question, I paid just a thousand pounds for. Then I spent about 1,500 pounds doing all the welding, and it's probably gonna cost me another 
six or eight grand, I suppose, to get back in decent condition, in a condition that I'd enjoy using it. And you can pick up decent examples for about 20. So it's still worth doing, I'm convinced. You can pick them up for between eight and 12, but they'll be ropey and they'll be rusty and they'll need a load of work. So I thought if this one owes me 10, 11, 12, I know it then, everything's been done and it should be good for another five years or so. I mean, realistically, I'm not going to use it an awful lot anyway. It's just a, a cool thing to knock around in. Well, I think that's about it then, guys. So thank you once again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this latest car collection video. I can't see, I can't see this collection changing an awful lot in the next 12 months. But if it does, I shall do another video. I'll keep you posted. I was thinking as well, I was chatting with my colleagues. I was thinking this year of perhaps buying a more of a YouTube car, something that I can take to shows, something interesting, something big engined. I'm thinking Audi S6 van or Audi S8 or an old DB9. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but just something interesting that I can go and do these events with. So that's what I was thinking anyway. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check them out. Squarespace.com forward slash high peak autos for 10% off your first website or domain name. Nearly run out of breath then. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.